Kahloyla Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Kwakadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahweh in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad in double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles and great millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. So quite often we mock and scoff at the mighty men of valor and their amazing feats that they were able to accomplish in the days of old. But when we study the scriptures, being students of the scriptures, we learn about the cycle of life. And the Bible says, what has been will be again. And there is no new thing under the sun. So we study about the mighty men of King David. And we're going to return to that original estate and become the immortals that the Bible prophesies about. Let's go into it. Let's go here first. We're going to go to the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 22. Let's go to verse 28. 2 Samuel 22, verse 26. With the merciful, thou wilt show thyself merciful, and with the upright man, thou wilt show thyself upright. With the pure, thou wilt show thyself pure, and with the fraud, thou wilt show thyself unsavory. So this is a perfect balance, a recompense to the wicked and a reward of the gifts of immortality and the kingdom to the elect of Israel. Let's go to verse 28. And the afflicted people thou will save but thine eyes are upon the haughty, that thou mayest bring them down. And that pride, or the most proud, starts with Esau, Edom, the Edomites. Second Samuel 22, verse 29. For thou art my lamp, O Lord, and the Lord will lighten my darkness. So spiritual power comes with the, the wisdom of the scriptures first. So this knowledge starts a metaphysiological change, starting with our temple, our mind. And this truth grows. And at a certain point, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, is going to turn up the switch full blown so it's a little seed planted into our mind this doctrine that's growing so this wisdom is the lamp second samuel 22 verse 29 for thou art my lamp o lord and the lord will lighten my darkness for by thee I have run through a troop by my power have I leaped over a wall let's go back to that video keep in mind this is Jake in our low estate these weakened bodies where the spirit has not been turned up and I'm speaking primarily on the elect. So imagine when the Spirit of the Lord turns up. The elect men or the mighty men of David 
are going to be unstoppable. Second Samuel 22, verse 30, For by thee I have run through a troop, by my power have I leaped over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. That buckler is a small shield. So he is our defense. There is no greater power than the power sent from on high. Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai which starts with this wisdom. Second Samuel 22. Let's go to verse 32. For who is God, save the Lord, and who is a rock, save our power? God is my strength and my power, and he maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds' feet, and setteth me upon my high places. If you've ever watched a deer run, it's, it looks like it's gliding or floating through the air. Hinds feet. And they're able to leap over heights of five to eight feet. May even higher. Make of my feet. My pine feet. Pull up a video of a deer running and leaping. They look like they're walking on air or gliding. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and set of me upon my high places. He teacheth my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by my arms. So imagine Jake right now dominating boxing, dominating MMA fighting, so-called Negroes, Native Americans, and Latinos, dominating football, basketball. Imagine being filled with the power from on high, the spiritual power and the gifts promise to the men of the elect and all of the remnant are going to be changed. Let's look at this word power. God is my strength and power and he maketh my way perfect. I'm going to look at that word power. Power comes from the Hebrew Strong's H2428, Chayil, Chayil. An army, wealth, virtue, valor, strength, able. Wow, this is heavy. Valor. So the men of David, the mighty men, are mighty men of valor, strength, and honor. Second Samuel 22, verse, 20, verse 35. He teacheth my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation and thy gentleness have made me great. Thou hast also Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, so that my feet did not slip. I have pursued mine enemies, and destroyed them, and turned not again, until I had consumed them. So Jake is going to be turned up, and become unstoppable. Matter of fact, let's go to... One of my favorites here, Micah 5. When I said Jake is going to be unstoppable, the elect. 
And this truth takes faith. Without faith, the Holy Spirit will not dwell within us. Without the gift of integrity and being fervent, fervent in our belief. That's having a burning zeal for this, these promises and this doctrine. See, Micah 5, verse 7. And the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people as they do from the Lord as the showers upon the grass that tarrieth not for man nor waiteth for the sons of men. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many people as a lion among the beasts of the forest as a young lion among the flocks of sheep who if he go through both treadeth down and teareth in pieces and none can deliver. Jake is going to be unstoppable. Elect the mighty men of the tabernacle of David, the battle acts of the Lord. And this is one of my favorite topics. I'm tired of the games here on earth, brokebacks, Jezebels, and being ruled and governed over by cave beasts. I mean, this has gotten out of hand. We're in the jungle, okay? So Jake is going to turn up and subdue the other nations, the natural Gentiles. Among the beasts, let's read that again. What beasts? These other nations, the natural Gentiles, Moab. Edom, Ishmael, Elam, or Elam, Amalek, Tyre, Zidon, you name it. Micah 5, verse 8. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many people, as a lion among the beasts of the forest, as a young lion among the flocks of sheep, who, if he go through, both treadeth down and teareth in pieces, and none can deliver. Thine hand shall be lifted up upon thine adversaries, and all thine enemies shall be cut off. This is beautiful. So Jake is going to be bending steel, melting steel, tanks, armored vehicles, up-armored trucks, Micah 5 and 10, and it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that I will cut off thy horses out of the midst of thee, and I will destroy thy chariots, military vehicles, armament. See, Second Samuel 22, verse 35, he teacheth my hands to war, so that a bow of steel is broken by my arms. Spiritual power, supernatural abilities, being able to leap, jump, bend steel. Where do you think they get that from, Superman? The man of steel. Evil E studies the scriptures. The devil knows. Go to Isaiah 40, verse 30. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. So the mighty men are coming back. The Lord is getting ready to move full throttle on his spirit being poured out to his tabernacle, his holy temple, in order to rebuild the temple of the Lord's house, then that spirit has to be present and has to be turned up full strength. So this is a high volume turn up. It's coming. Only the men of faith is going to receive this gift and take the kingdom 
The Bible says the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom that can only come through the gift of the Holy Spirit being ratcheted up to maximum level. Level up. How many ever played video games? It's time to level up. <coughs> Let's read that again. Isaiah 40, verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. So doing this in our weak state, imagine when the Spirit of the Lord comes down with full power. And he doing this with a baby face, no beard, half naked, not in the truth. So imagine what's coming to the mighty men that are back on the earth today, waiting for that switch to be ignited, the change to come. Let's close out here. Let's go to Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah 23. Let's go to verse 7. We're going to go to 6. Jeremiah 20. I'm sorry, Joshua. Keep saying Jeremiah. Joshua chapter 23, verse 6. Be ye therefore very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses that ye turn not aside therefrom to the right hand or to the left. So this book is like our medallion, our strength. Sin is our kryptonite. They put that in the movie, Superman or Man of Steel. So deviating from the power source, this word puts us in a weakened state. Joshua 23, verse 7, that ye come not among these nations, these that remain among you, neither make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them, nor bow yourselves unto them. We still worshiping the golden retriever, Jebus. We're still worshiping rocks and stones, wood, all types of statues and idols. Many Jakes still worship the Queen of Heaven. You see, that comedic mess bugged out. And this is why we're still at the bottom. If all Israel would repent today, we'll be in the kingdom tomorrow. Fully changed, new bodies and possess the nations. Joshua 23, verse 8. But cleave unto the Lord your God, as ye have done unto this day. The elect have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. So a remnant is repenting now in, in these last days. Joshua 23, verse 9. For the Lord have driven out from before you great nations and strong. But as for you, no man have been able to stand before you unto this day. So this power is coming back unto this day. What has been will be again. No man or nation can take the kingdom of the world without spiritual intervention from on high. Except the Lord had been our help, we would have been consumed by the nations. Joshua 23, verse 9. For the Lord have driven out from before you 
great nations and strong, but as for you, no men have been able to stand before you unto this day. So if salvation is for everybody, why is Israel subduing and taking down nations? Doesn't make sense. Salvation, rulership, immortality, and dominion is promised to the nation of Israel, which starts with the Lord's holy temple, elect. Joshua 20, Joshua 23, verse 10. One man of you shall chase a thousand for the Lord your God. He it is that fighteth for you as he have promised you. The promises, immortality, being changed, never dying, never getting sick again, no more crying and weeping, no more mourning, no more despair, a healed, broken heart, being lifted up from the ashes of being downtrodden, afflicted. One man of you shall chase a thousand for the Lord, your power. He it is that fighteth for you as he hath promised you. Take good heed, therefore, unto yourselves that ye love the Lord, your power. If we love him, we do what he says. Repent and come back to the word of promise. The holy covenant, the book of life, which is this word. So the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Kadash, Barakatham. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yasharala and Abad Baba. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.